Hey guys, Helping Hands here, and today I'll be looking at a brand new 4X style strategy game, Dune Spice Wars. From the creators of Northgard, Shira Games brings you to the world of Arrakis, where multiple factions are pitted against each other for control over the planet. There are currently four playable factions in total, each with their own gameplay mechanics and playstyles. First up, we have House Atreides, a house with a stellar reputation that is known for being firm, honorable, and fair. They have access to the peaceful annexation ability and have no loss of the authority resource from treaties with other factions. The second playable faction is House Harkonnen, a brutal and scheming house which uses the oppression ability on Harkonnen villages. They also benefit from an increased resource production based on the amount of active garrison militia. Next up is the Smugglers faction. There is a fine line between bandits and smugglers and their faction leader Esma Tuek is adept at walking that line. They're able to install underworld headquarters in opponents' villages and can place Bounty of Lands Rad resolutions. Finally, we have the Fremen, those that are native to Arrakis and know the land well. They have access to Worm Riding, which I think is a really cool ability, and also a reduced cost in daily supply drain from their military units. Before you begin a run in Dune Spice Wars, you must first choose two counsellors out of a possible four. Each come with extra boons, from increased resource production to veterancy on fighting units. If you click on the button next to start game, you are able to change the settings of the match. From here, you can change such things as the map size, AI difficulty, and frequency of harmful events like storms, sandworms, and Saech hostility. You can also disable certain AI players if you choose to do so. Once you start the match, you're greeted by your capital and have an ornicopter, which you will use to scout and recon nearby areas. Before we go any further, however, I must first point out that currently, the tutorial system for this game needs a lot of improvement, and I, as a brand new player to this style of strategy game, found myself confused as to what to do next. Thanks to Twitch chat, I was able to get a grasp of the game. First time you play, I would advise you to pause the game with the space bar and take a moment to familiarize yourself with the UI. If you click your faction leader's portrait top left of your monitor, you will see your faction's bonuses and what other bonuses you will get once you reach certain levels of hegemony. You can also see your and other factions hegemony totals and their lands rad standing. Once you reach 25,000 hegemony, you win the match. The higher your lands rad rating standing, the fewer attacks you will get and more trading potential. Next to your faction leader's portrait, you have the two counselors you picked for your run. Hover over these to remind yourself of what bonuses they have. On the right of this, we have the spice information section. At the top, we can see the churn rate where you sell spice for the currency Solaris. Currently, it sells at a rate of one spice to two Solaris. Below this, you can see how much spice you are generating per day by the number in green under stockpile. To the right of this is the tax on spice. Every month, spice tax is collected and you need to have a certain amount in your stockpile to give to the Imperium. At the start of the game, the number is 80. And as the months go by, the amount of spice required as tax keeps increasing. There is a bar at which you can increase or decrease the amount of spice you wish to sell or stockpile. Click on the spice report button here for a more detailed analysis of the spice situation. To briefly go over the other resources, we have your Solaris count, under which you can see the units or structures that are requiring upkeep to maintain. Next you have Plaskrete used for constructing new buildings, manpower for troops and crews, fuel cells for buildings and vehicles, water for villages, authority which you use to take over land, and lands rad standing. Your hegemony total can be seen here. As you can see, there are many ways to increase your hegemony count, from enemy units killed, to tax paid, to areas controlled. At the top right, we can select the other faction leader's portraits if we wish to trade with them. What do you want? You are able to trade lots of different resources, including such things as influence, agents, and intelligence, which we'll get into later. 
Now, let's get into some gameplay. You should see a flashing symbol on the left of your screen which tells you your first objective and that is to find a village with spice. Select your Ornihopter and tell it to go to a neighbouring region to start a reconnaissance mission. It will take a minute or two for the Ornicopter to fully recon that region. Some regions will have wreckages or ruins and stuff like that to investigate. You can only investigate these once you have your first agent and you assign him in the espionage category of Arrakis. You can't do this just yet. So now we have discovered our first village. You can see that there is a number two by the village name. That is an indication of how many military units are occupying that village currently. You can also see there is a rare gemstone deposit nearby, indicating by that orange gemstone. Once you have reconnaissance region, you are advised yes, to sir. move your orny hopter to another region to keep Ready. it constantly being busy and discovering new places. Service, You've got to find that spice field. Proceed. I've just recruited two military units. You can recruit military units on the right hand side tab. You can see you have harvesters, orny hopters, and military. Click on the plus symbol where it says military and recruit yourself a trooper unit and a ranger unit. Once you've got these units selected, you want to go attack the first village that you have found. So select both those units and then get close to the village and then issue an attack command by hovering over the village and then right clicking. The occupants should come out and start attacking you. Make sure you have your range unit in the back firing its range weapon. If it gets into melee, it's not being super effective. You can also see here that my capital is firing missiles at the enemy because they are within range. Once you have killed the enemy units surrounding that village, you now occupy it, indicated by the green ring around it. To now take over this village, you need to spend 5 water and 28 authority. This will take a few moments to do so. Now we can see our Orny Hopster has finally located a region with a spice field in it. So this will be our next top priority. So we'll take our army and go and try and conquer this village. Before we do that, however, we need to make sure our army is fully strength. We can see that one of our units took damage and it's slowly regaining health by being stationed next to a village. Uh, all our all units can regain both their health and their supply, which is the orange bar below that, by being next to a village or a capital. Supply slowly runs out when you're in an, an enemy territory and if it reaches all the way down to zero your units will start dying and taking attrition Listening. now that we have our first village we can have access to the development trees on the right hand side here we can focus on intelligence and espionage military logistics and economy the more knowledge you have the faster you will unlock these sections in your tech tree you gain more knowledge by building research hubs in statecraft. You can only build one of each building in each region. So here we have the village that is in the region of the spice field that we want to take over. Now we could attack this village like we did the last one, but we could also here do a peaceful annexation. This will cost us an extra 50 influence to do so. If we do this, it will take a little bit longer. However, the military garrison in the village will be ours and we won't have to buy a military garrison to be able to hold the village. So that's the benefit you get there. But you do lose the influence, however. I've decided to not to do this and not waste the influence this time because I want to save it for a later date. Now we've taken over this village, we want to now build the refinery so we can start harvesting that spice. Click on the village and then locate the building section at the bottom left. Click on the plus symbol and then under economy there should be the button which says refinery. Click that button and then place the refinery anywhere around the village to then begin building that building. While we're waiting for that refinery to build, we've just been notified that we now have access to an unassigned agent. Click on the pop-up and then you'll be taken to the espionage screen. This looks a bit confusing at first, but I will go and try and explain it. So here you can assign agents to different tasks. On the left side, we can assign agents to infiltrate other factions. In the center, we can assign them to specific tasks, like for instance, the first one is Arrakis. So if we assign an agent here, we can get them to then go around and, and, and look for uh, in the ruins for resources and stuff for us. Um, the Spacing Guild gives access to manpower and production. The Chome helps with increasing um, the money income from Solari. 
and then Landsrad helps us with the, uh, the reputation over there and helps with the infiltration, influence and intel production. On the far right we have missions um, which we can unlock with intelligence. This allows us to um, act, sabotage elements against our opposing factions and uh, you know get ahead in regards to the economy side of things here as well. So for my first agent I will decide to pop him to Arrakis so that I can get my agent to go and explore some of the ruins that we've uncovered nearby. So here we're going to click on these ruins over here and investigate it with our agent, like so. And now our refinery has been complete, our harvester is now ready to be deployed. You have to manually select the harvester and then click the deploy button and then a ship will come and airlift up into position onto the spice field. Once that has been done, it will start generating you spice. Every so often, you'll get attacked by the natives of the land called the Seich. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Um, but they, here we have a unit coming in to attack one of my newly acquired villages. So we're going to send our army back there to defend. If an enemy army takes over and occupies one of your towns, uh, you've got some time to get back there and boot them out of there before they can fully control the town. While they are occupying it, you're not gaining any resources from it. But if you get there in time and kick them out, there'll be no consequence. Every so often you'll be hit with a random event, like here we have Renowned Merchant, a traveling salesman who's looking for new markets. There may be some mutual gain to be found. So if you complete one of these objectives, you could, you could either choose one or the other. So if we build two um, new economy buildings, we can gain this, which is 500 Solari and 100 Hegemony, which is a, a, a win resource, which we want to try and gain. Or instead, we could pillage two villages or um, the Sitchis, the home of the bandits, basically, the village, the, the people that live in the land that come raid you, um, and you'd, you'd get a thousand of that. So you've got to choose kind of one or the other, and you've got 20 days over here to complete it. Also, the, one of the last thing we need to talk about is the Lands Raid Council vote. This is where influence comes in and votes. So we click this button here, and this happens every so often. Here, you can vote on what you want to do. Um, and you have normally three uh, options here to choose from. So here we have gear regulations. So minus 30 unit power. So this would be across the board for uh, you know people that you might want to apply this to. Um, let's say you're really, really strong and your opponent's quite weak. If you pop that on, that might be a benefit. Or if you put all your votes in here, let's say we wanted to get more bonus chome from the spice exchange. That will increase the rate so we can sell uh, spice for a higher amount of salary. So that would be quite good. So I'd probably put my votes in there. So you get 100 free votes, because we're the House of Atreides. Um, and we also have 145 influence, so we can spend extra influence to gain more votes, basically. So I could bump this all the way up to 240, basically. And that, you know, I highly likely would win that, and only I would get this bonus. But you've got to be thinking about what other factions have. So we can see um, the House Har Harkonnen only have 80 votes. Um, we don't know how much influence they have. So what we'll do here is probably go a little bit above that. So I'm probably going to vote maybe 100. Let's go to say 140, maybe 150, 160. So I can definitely gain that. And also we want yeah more authorities great so, because that allows us to grab more territory. So we probably want to put the rest of our influence in there and try and gain that as well. I kind of want to get both, so I'm probably going to drop that into there a little bit of both, and hopefully we can gain one of these, uh, maybe both of these things, which would really be really beneficial in the early game for us. So, um, and what happens is whoever's voted the most on each one of these things gets the bone, uh, the bonus, basically. So there you go. And that will end in six days. To gain more influence, you can build the certain building. You've got influence buildings here. So you've got in your state scraps, you get wisdom. Uh, research hub gives you knowledge. Listing post gives you influence. Data center gives you intelligence, which you can use to do espionage tactics, things like that. You've got your military buildings over here, which helps you with your manpower production. Your airfield, which allows you to unit image units can embark or disembark shuttles within the building's range, so you can get around the map faster. Missile battery, you can pop this down here, acts as a defense, so if enemy units come here, this will hit them. You've got access to spice silos, helps increase spice production. Um, Plascrete for the buildings, and for instance, over here, for Plascrete, we built, we started to build a Plascrete over here. Why? Because this 
the special resource here is minerals, and that gives us 50% more Plants Creek Factory resource production. So you want to try and put the specific buildings in the regions where you get the most benefit out from. So here we have Plants Creek, so we want to put it over here. If we grab this region, we would get um, more from fuel cell factories. So we'd, if we wanted to build a fuel cell, we come over here. This is a... Whereas the fuel cell is down here. So if we put this building in, in that volcano area over here, we'd get more fuel cells, basically. Um, for water, you want to look at the wind strength at the bottom left over here. So wind strength is four. This one's five. So the higher the wind strength, the more water you could get. You want to try and be going for a high wind strength. So generally, regions of maybe five or more are the ones you want to be prioritizing. So this one's actually six. So we probably want to put our wind farm in here after we built this plascrete. And a few more of the buildings we have access to are maintenance center, so just reduce upkeep. Uh, water, as we just talked about, fuel cells. You've got access to processing plants, so that's something we would want to put over here. But we can only have access to the processing plant once we get the, the specific tech, which will be, I believe, down here. You need structured warehouses for that. So you can see how everything... You know, you get you further get ahead, you get more tech. All that water extractor plus forty, which is very very good. So we probably want that as well, because that you know you need lots of water and authority to keep grabbing more territories and keep everything good. If you ever have a negative like manpower or or water things like that, you'll uh, you're likely to get rebellions, and then you you know you'll have to send armies to to deal with those rebellions. But you don't want to be negative for a long time, otherwise it just won't be sustainable. So hopefully, you guys, you get an idea of uh, what. Dune Spice Wars is all about, giving you kind of a, a quick taster here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, graphically it looks good. I think, I, you know, I, I would play it. I don't know if there's any multiplayer in the game yet. It is early access, you've got to bear that in mind. And I definitely feel the devs do need to do a better, much better tutorial for the game. Um, so it's a lot easier for everybody to understand. But yeah, as a first time, um, you know, it's really good. One last thing I want to talk about before we go is you've got to watch out for the Dune Worms. The, sand, the sandworms are around. Um, here we have our harvester, and you've got to be careful with this. If you've got it on auto recall, uh, basically, if, there, if a worm comes around, um, it'll automatically get picked up and then brought back to safety. If you don't have this on, um, you'll get a little bit more resources. But if you're not quick enough to get to manually, you know, recall it, you'll lose uh, your harvester. Okay. So if we enable auto recall on, you can see it goes from 20, goes down to 24. So you only lose one extra spice. It's not a huge difference. But it can, you know, in the long scheme of things, you know, might not work, might not be worthwhile. And again, make sure to always yes, get your Orny Hopters to constantly keep scouring and uh, checking out the re next, next door regions and finding where your opponents are at. So there you guys go. Hope you enjoyed the first little look there at Dune Spice Wars. And if you're interested in tracking the game out, check out the link in the description below. Click on it and it'll take you to the Steam store where you can have a look. Thanks again for watching and... Be sure not to get eaten by the June sandworm like I did. What the fuck, man? Oh, and they're, they're the fucking sandworm as well. Oh, you god damn it, man. Fuck this. Oh, mate. Okay, GG. Okay. Fuck. Well, lads, Never. thanks for watching that video. If you want more content, click up here. Or click over here to click on other content. But make sure to click on that middle button to subscribe to the channel. Okay. And I uh, stream every single day on twitch.tv forward slash helping hands. Catch you in the next one, guys. Take care.